quite a few years on with the OnePlus 7T Pro, and it's still looking good. Every time I come back to my OnePlus, I'm still amazed at how the full, uninterrupted display looks and feels. So how does it run with the versatile and feature-rich CR Droid, which has been floating around for over 10 years across many devices now? Starting off with performance, I found that initially things felt a touch slow, with scrolling and transitions stuttering a little, but ensuring smooth display was on and turning off window blur did appear to help things considerably. This could be due to my own UI tweaks though. The hardware in the 7T Pro may be getting on, but the Snapdragon 855 Plus is still plenty capable, with day-to-day -day use being just fine and all my apps performing as I'd expect. While on the app side of things, Google Apps aren't standard, with CRDroid bundling in its own, but they can of course be sideloaded. My banking app, Google Wallet and Teams all ran without issue, but we do only get L3 Widevine here, which would cap Netflix at 480p. YouTube is fine though, and Disney still looked all right. RAM management seemed good too, with no obvious app closures and scoring a 100% in Don't Kill My App. Moving into the real highlight of CR Droid, their absolute kitchen sink approach to options and customizations. They've managed to add additional options to just about every existing Android menu, but there's also a separate CR Droid section, which lets you change nearly every aspect of, well, everything. Animations, icons, transparency, behaviors, there's a lot here. I particularly enjoy being able to change the quick settings toggles, adding transparency to the notification shade, and intelligent gestures, all with the aim of bringing things closer to some of my favorite skins of the past. There's even a Google Photos Unlimited toggle and a setting to hide the gesture pill. Just be careful as it can sometimes mess with full screen gestures. The biggest curiosity though was the copycat Apple Dynamic Island, which I imagine works better if you're still stuck with a device with an ugly hole punch. But wait, that's not even all, as there's also a OnePlus menu here, ensuring those extras still work, and even going further, like being able to fully customise the alert slider. The only feature I really had issues with was nightlight colouring inconsistencies. And the only ones I really missed was the horizon light on the OnePlus side and the digital wellbeing bedtime mode on the Google side. The latter could be worked around at least. Essential for my Pixel Watch bedtime sync. Check out the info section if you want details on that workaround. Camera performance was fine with the stock camera, but as usual, I much prefer Gcam. The colors were just more accurate, and contrasting scenes looked punchier compared to stock, which often looked a bit flat and out of focus. The way it dealt with light was also better, where it could preserve detail in the shadows keep scenes vibrant in the shade, and still capture light sources to give off a pleasing warm glow. The old hardware can only go so far though, as once it's too dark, you really need to start leaning on longer exposure modes. Around front, the pop-up camera still makes itself useful, being available for face unlock. It works surprisingly well, even accounting for popping up. But I did switch this off pretty early, as I often worry about the mechanical wear this might inflict over time. It might be an okay option if you're impatient though, as even after a few weeks, the other unlock option, fingerprint, was only ever average for me, 
working with about an 80% strike rate in ideal conditions and dropping off dramatically in less ideal lighting. Battery life was just okay. As I would get through most of my days with average use, hitting bedtime with about 40% remaining with over three hours of screen on time. Except any day it got used for the morning one hour Teams meeting where it pretty much ran out of juice by 6 p.m. This is a battery with reasonable health for its age too, all while keeping the always on display turned off. Don't count on a quick top up to offset heavy days either, as even though it does say warp charging, I can only get five watts out of my generic 20 watt charger and a measly 12 watts from the OnePlus warp charger, where it should have been able to achieve 30. From a little digging, this might be due to the Oxygen OS 12 firmware limiting charging speeds. So I doubt a fix in this ROM will be possible outside of maybe routing. Rounding things out with updates, OTA updates are apparently possible, but I didn't have much luck with mine, instead needing to apply them in recovery. Not really a big deal, but a bit more effort. Whether you manage to update via OTA or recovery, be mindful that Google Apps will need to be flashed again if you want them. Other than that, things have so far been active and prompt, with security remaining up to date, which is much more than OnePlus manages for this device. So I'm a bit disappointed I hadn't checked out CR Droid sooner, as I really love its overall approach. I'll always be drawn to the ability to tweak and customize my device to no end, and CR Droid makes it amazingly easy to do, with more tweaks available than I've ever seen in any ROM I've previously tried. Even with some minor issues, this is an amazing ROM, and bringing my 7T Pro, which OnePlus only provided Android 12 for, up to Android 14, and an entire kitchen sink of options is everything I could want in a ROM.